Let me show you how we can create a convincing glow effect using nothing more than Lightroom. So you can follow along this tutorial by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of the video. And now let's jump into it. As always, I will be showing the whole editing process. If you're just here for the tutorial part, make sure to check the chapters of the video. We are going to start with the basic adjustments first. And right away, let me apply some AI denoising. So let's expand the details panel and I'm going to apply AI denoise because I shot this at ISO 1600. So to prevent noise, let's click the denoise button. Right away, this is looking much better. I don't even need a that high of an amount of denoise. We can bring it down very gently and click on enhance. And with this out of the way, we can now start working on the exposure. For that, let's open up the basic panel. I'm changing the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard. This will lessen the overall contrast of the image a little bit. And to create this glow effect, less contrast is really helping achieving this effect. After setting up the profile, I'm also going to bring down the highlights a little bit. This will help reveal a little more detail in the sky. Then let's bring down the shadows. This way we can bring back a little bit of contrast to the image without risking underexposure. We do have a little bit of clipping as you can see looking at the histogram, but this will be fixed in the next step as I bring up the blacks. Not only will this fix the clipping in the darkest parts, this will also further lessen the contrast and thus giving the whole shot a softer look this way. Of course, we don't want to lose too much contrast. And also looking at the histogram, you can see this whole shot is way too dark for a golden hour scene like this. So what I want to do to counter this problem is to bring up the whites. This way I'm going to make it brighter and I'm going to bring back a little bit of contrast in a very controlled way. That's looking perfect. Now we made the image brighter, but we still have a very soft feeling to it because of the raised blacks which is kind of our base for the glow effect we are going to add later on. So that's super important as you can see. Now that we have adjusted the exposure, what I also want to do is to work on the white balance because I want to have this feeling of a nice golden hour light. The easiest way to do that is to bring up the white balance temperature and just like that, the image looks much, much better. Then uh, let's go through the present step real quick. I am going to bring up the texture, which will add a little more sharpness to the details of this image. Then I'm going to bring up the dehaze, which will help with the overall contrast. And then I'm going to bring down the clarity very gently to add a kind of soft glowing look over everything. Now I want this image to be rather desaturated. So I'm not going to increase the vibrance. Instead, I'm going to bring it down, taking out some of these colors, just like this. Perfect. And there we already have our image of the basic adjustments. Let's compare to before real quick. Exposure wise, it's looking much, much better. Plus, you can already see some of that glow coming in from the left side of the image, which is exactly where we want that glow effect to be later on. So for the next step, let's take a look at the masking. And before I'm going to apply any masking, let's think about what we need to do. The sunlight is coming in from the upper left corner. But very important, the rocks in the foreground are lying in the shadows. So these need to stay dark. Then we also have light hitting the rocks on the right side in the foreground. And the mountains at the far back on the right side are again lying in the dark. So how can we emphasize this glow effect? We're going to start this with a linear gradient. I want that linear gradient to have the same angle than the natural light source coming in from the left side. So let's go with something like this. I think I wanna tilt it a little more and I'm making sure to overlap this mountain in the distance on the left side. Now we can already see the issue. If we would adjust this mask, not only would the mountain in the back change, but also the rocks in the foreground. So we need a way to get rid of that part of this mask. What we're going to do for that is to click on subtract then we want to choose a select objects mask. Here it's very important to not use the brush, but we want to use the rectangle select mode. With that, I'm going to draw a rectangle around the rocks in the foreground, roughly targeting them like this. Now in the best case, Lightroom will detect just these rocks as you can see, and we're getting a pretty good selection this way, but still there are a few things selected which you wanna clean up. So again, I'm going to subtract another objects mask. And I'm going to draw a rectangle around 
the part of the rocks on the right side. And that's looking much better. Now we just need to clean up the bottom part. Therefore, I'm going to subtract a brush and I'm just going to clean up the foreground this way. Just like that, we have a perfect mask for the glow effect. But now, how do we add the glow? This is really, really easy. We want this area to be brighter, but I don't want to raise the exposure because that would blow out the highlights. Similarly, we don't want to raise the highlights or the whites because that would lead to the same effect. So instead, we can use shadows, blacks and dehaze to introduce glow. Let me bring up the blacks so you can see what will be happening. The darker areas within this mask will become brighter and thus introducing this very natural looking glow effect. Of course, I don't want to raise it too much because that becomes too obvious. So I'm going to, I'm going to tone it down somewhere around 30 is good enough. And then let's go down and I want to bring down the dehaze as well. The dehaze is a little bit stronger than the black slider. So you want to be careful with that. However, in this case, I think I can bring it down quite a bit to add this beautiful light effect coming in from the left side of the image. Wonderful. And you see with just these two sliders, we have introduced this beautiful light effect coming in. Of course, we can enhance it a little more. What we can do is to introduce a little bit of color, giving it more of a golden hour light look. So I'm going to bring up the white palette's temperature within this mask, making this light look warmer. Just a little bit like this, somewhere around 15 should be fine. Wonderful. And there we have the glow effect. That's the image before and this one is after. Much better, of course, we can still improve things. So let me create a radial gradient. Again, I'm going to align it with the light source so it has a slight angle to it. This time I'm making sure I'm slightly overlapping the rocks in the foreground because I want a little bit of light hitting these mountains as well, just to kind of blend these areas a little better together. So let me rotate it a little more and push it up a bit like this. And then again, I'm going to bring up the blacks. As you can see, this will mostly affect the these darker areas in the foreground. And I'm also going to bring down the dehaze. Just a little like this. Okay, I think we could bring down this radial gradient a little more. So these rocks will become brighter. And again, we can make this whole area warmer by bringing up the temperature. Perfect. Now let me turn off all the masks to see the difference from before to after. Of course, we are losing some details in the mountain right here in the back. However, I don't think it's that important. I prefer having this bright look over it. Now, not only can we make this image more interesting by introducing bright glow on the right on the left side, but we can work on other areas, making them darker and thus adding more contrast to specific areas of the image. And again, this will help make the glow effect stand out even more. So let me show you what I mean. I want to make the mountains right here in the back darker. Let me see how we can target them. Let me create a new mask. I'm going to use the new select landscape mask. Lightroom is detecting mountains. As you can see, I can just click on it and let's choose create mask. As I said, I just want to make certain parts darker. We really don't want to affect the left side, which we just made brighter. So I'm going to subtract a linear gradient and I'm taking out pretty much all of that glowing area from the left. Okay, now we still have parts of the foreground selected, which I really don't want. So again, let's click on subtract, choose select objects. And again, I'm just drawing a rectangle around the foreground. Perfect. Then we are going to clean up the rest of it using a brush. And I'm just going to clean up the foreground right here. Wonderful. That's looking like a great selection. What I'm going to do now is to introduce a lot of contrast, making the right part of the mountains in the back a lot darker. And thus the glow effect becomes way stronger. And we are creating this really cool balance between the bright left side and the dark right side. I do think I also want to bring down the blacks in here, making them even darker. For more contrast, we can also bring up the whites. Then let's add a little bit of clarity for some midtones contrast and some more dehaze. Okay, that's looking great. I do think I want to make these mountains a bit warmer. So I'm going to bring up the temperature, introducing some more yellow tones on them. Nice. 
then we have this bright spot right here in the foreground. I think we can also make this area brighter to make the whole glow effect a little more convincing, like the light is hitting this place right here. I'm going to start us using a simple select objects mask and again I'm just drawing a rectangle around this spot. Lightroom is doing a great job selecting this part but I want to modify this mask a little bit more. So I'm going to subtract a linear gradient and I'm taking out the right side of it, kind of making it a little, little softer towards the edge here. I'm going to introduce a little more light on this spot by bringing up the exposure. Let's bring up the contrast, giving this spot some more punch. And I'm going to bring up the shadows just to make it a little brighter as well. Okay, let me deactivate this mask in particular to see the difference from before to after. Now we have a beautiful light effect on this part of the rocks as well. Okay, now we're almost done with masking. There's just one more thing I wanna do and that is to add more punch to the sky. I'm going to use a color range mask and I'm clicking right in here in the blue part. This will select way more than needed. So we need to modify this mask as well. I'm going to click on those dots here. I'm going to choose intersect mask width and I'm going to click on select sky. Still, I'm not really happy. I wanna subtract another linear gradient and I wanna take out pretty much all of that left side, which should stay dark. But the rest of the selection, I'm going to bring down the exposure, which will make the blue part of the sky darker. And thus we're adding more contrast to the scene, making the sky look much better this way. I'm also going to bring down the blacks. Let's drop them quite a bit. I like this effect in here. And let's bring up the contrast. All right. We could also play around with the temperature, introducing some more of a natural blue tone up there. I'm going to bring down the temperature for that. Okay. And there we have the image after the masking adjustments. So let me turn off all the masks so we can see the difference from before to after. Beautiful. Now we can also do a little bit of color grading. I'm going to start in the color mixer. As I said in the, in, in the beginning, I want this shot to be rather desaturated. So I'm going to bring down the yellow tones just a little bit and I'm going to bring down the orange tones as well, like this. And we could also head into the luminance tab, play around with a yellow and orange to make these areas a bit brighter in the image. Okay, nice. Then we can use split toning within the color grading panel. I'm going to use the highlights to emphasize the golden hour light. That means I'm choosing a very warm hue somewhere in, in that color range. And I'm going to bring up the saturation, introducing this very heavy color effect. I think that looks great. Let's go into the midtones and let's see if we can do some more here. I'm going to use a, the same warm hue and I'm going to slightly bump up the saturation. All right, beautiful. Then we can take a look at the shadows. We can kind of keep some color contrast. I'm going to bring up the hue to a blue color tone. And I'm going to very gently pull up the saturation to have a hint of blue in the darkest parts of the image. Finally, we can go down into the calibration tab. Here, I'm going to bring down the blue primary hue. I just think it looks better this way. And I'm going to bring up the saturation a little. All right, nice. Now, the only thing left to do is the sharpening in the details panel. So let's open it up. I'm going to bring down the radius, increase the details all the way up. Then I'm going to hold on the Alt key while adjusting the masking slider. I think and that's looking good. And let's bring up the amount of sharpening and we are done editing this image. So I hope you like this glow effect. I hope it will be helpful for your future images and let me know what you think about it. If you have any further questions, let me also know in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.